okay, we're talking about how Parliament or Congress or the legislature, uh, this applies to any of these uh, entities, uh, are all satanic. Uh, so let's get going. Uh, we're going to talk about how they're all satanic. All of their legislation is color of law and a fraud. All racism comes from Congress and their Masonic buddies. Uh, there's no judges, there's just clerks masquerading as judges. So all courts, except common law courts, are satanic. All of it operates under Roman civil law, which is satanic. All uh, Roman civil law status, under Roman civil law status, is everything. And under common law status is nothing. Common law has all the remedies we need. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Mark Passio. He's a former Satanist priest. He's got some YouTube videos about natural law. He's got some other ones too, and I highly recommend watching them. The guy is brilliant. He's got some very interesting things to say. He uh, had to learn Latin in high school, so he goes into the derivative of a lot of words that we use and take for granted and uh, explains what they really mean. Uh, it talks about the pillars of Satanism. Since he's a satan former Satanist priest, I'd say that he'd be well qualified to talk about that. Uh, one of the pillars is moral relativism. There's ab no absolute right or wrong. As truth is relative, we just make up what is right or wrong. What is right or wrong is what we decide today, and tomorrow it'll be something else. Two-thirds of the people believe in moral relativism. Uh, uh, and he says these pillars of Satanism are forms of mind control. He says that survival is the highest law of Satanism. Social Darwinism, certain classes of society think they are most fit to rule. Postulates of survival are the most socially ruthless. Ultimate responsibilities and self-preservation. Eugenics, uh, elite to get to determine who lives or dies. And that goes along with, uh, you know, uh, a, a statement that Prince, Prince Philip is attributed to have made. Um, uh, saying that they're calling people like me and you uh, useless eaters. You know, he needs to, he wants to get rid of people like me and you so he can have uh, the global plantation to himself. Um, anyways, uh, other pillars of Satanism or forms of mind control is order takers. We're going to talk about order takers today. Uh, they're responsible for all the atrocities in history, and if you think about it, he's 100% right. Uh, they just follow orders without thinking about whether it's a lawful order or not. They're willing slaves, and this is his YouTube profile. It's what on earth is happening, um, and I would uh, highly recommend uh, taking a look at uh, some of his videos. Uh, if you uh, understand what happened with the World War II uh, war crimes tribunals, all of the Nazis claimed they were just following orders, and they either suffered death by hanging or spent the rest of their life in jail, and some of them are still hunted to this day. And uh, in the Vietnam War, there was the My Lai Massacre, and uh, those, those uh, people were convicted of murder. And today, order takers are everywhere. And we'll talk a little bit about order takers today. Um, anyways, some of the things you see every day using satanic philosophy of moral relativism are false flag operations, which is the end justifies the means. Uh, 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 agent provocateurs uh, is another example of the end justifies the means. Entrapment is uh, when it comes out or whoever uh, was, uh, was entrapped uh, by these agent provocateurs with their false flag operation. If they can prove it in court, then the courts will dismiss the case. Uh, at the kangaroo courts uh, because there's even certain things that they won't put up with. Uh, um, all court cases are kangaroo courts unless it's a common law courts and it's a satanic. It's, it's, and the reason is is because the judge is a clerk playing stupid. He's working for the prosecutor. If you don't know the law or fail to do something properly or follow the right procedure, they'll sell you into slavery. And, and that's, uh, that's basically uh, that's, they're turning you into merchandise. And uh, they have no authority. Uh, they use their unconstitutional uniform commercial code. It's all satanic. It's all diabolically evil. Uh, this is a, a, a clip art that I found on the internet about how to spot a false flag operation. And uh, as immediate, uh, one of the first things you notice is immediate national news coverage. There's a political agenda. Uh, incident inspires intense emotion. Uh, uh, initial media stories conflict with the official story. No one's allowed to see the dead bodies. Similar drills are held nearby. Uh, um, mainstream media manipulation tactics uh, and the federal government attention. So uh, I think that's a pretty good way of telling if there's a false flag operation going on and they, they like do those nowadays it seems. 
Um, anyways, uh, in the Bible it says that uh, woe unto them that call good, evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness. And uh, that's the end justifies the means. It's satanic. This is a um, an image that I got off the internet uh, that I think explains things pretty well. Uh, it talks about uh, Marxism and uh, Judaism and Roman Christianity, not Christianity in general, uh, but certainly Roman Christianity, all uh, being uh, uh, part of Satanism. Uh, uh, Zionism certainly is part of Satanism. You see what they do to those people over there in Palestine? I mean, that's that's evil. That's, that's terrible what they do. Uh, Islam. Islam is satanic, actually, if you understand uh, some of the stuff that they talk about, and we'll talk a little bit about that in this one, too. Uh, uh, and uh, so Judaism, I don't know enough about Judaism to say one way or the other, uh, because uh, I'm, I'm not sure if Judaism is the Jewish religion or if it's something, some part of it or what. Uh, and this third way Europeism, I, I don't know... Uh, anything about that either so I couldn't say but uh, but this I, I, it fits for everything else um, uh, so uh, the color uh, signifies a probable plea but which is in fact false it's a lie uh, and that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary 1835 edition a colorable presenting appearance that does not correspondence with reality an appearance intended to conceal or deceive and that's uh, uh, Barron's Canadian Law Dictionary um, Color of law, mere semblance of a legal right, an act done under a color of law is one done with apparent authority of law, but actually in contravention of law. And that's again, um, uh, Barron's Canadian Law Dictionary. Color and appearance, a semblance, a smilcrum, as distinguished from that which is real, a prima facie, or apparent right. Hence, a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior, concealing a lack of reality, disguise, or a pretext. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, okay? It's a fraud. It's a lie. And, uh, and, and it's, 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 it's a lie is what it is. It's a fraud. And um, color of law means the appearance or semblance without the substance of legal right, misuse of power, possessed by virtue of state law, made possible only because wrongdoer is closed with authority of state, is action taken under color of law. Um, fraud. Okay, and this is all satanic. Okay, this is all satanic because 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 it's it's a lie, and that's what Satanism is all about. Uh, um, fraud, an intentional perversion of the truth for the purpose of inducing another into reliance upon it to part with some valuable thing belonging to him or to surrender a legal right. Uh, when one conveys a false impression by disclosure of some facts and the concealment of others, such concealment is in fact a false representation that what is disclosed is the whole truth, and it's a, it's a lie. Um, silence can only be equated with fraud when there's a legal or moral duty to speak or when an inquiry left unanswered would be intentionally misleading. We cannot condone the shocking conduct. If that is the case, we hope a message is clear. This sort of deception, okay, so it's a lie. Deception will be, not be tolerated, and that's U.S. versus Tweel. Suppression of a material fact which a party is bound in good faith to disclose the equivalent of false representation. Fraud and deceit may arise from silence when there is a duty to speak the truth as well as from speaking an untruth. Concealing a material fact when there is a duty to disclose may be an actionable fraud. Um, where a relation of trust or confidence exists between two parties so that one places a, a particular reliance and trustworthiness of another, the latter is under duty to make full and truthful disclosure of all material facts and is liable to, for misrepresentation and concealment. Uh, uh, fraud may be considered committed by a failure to speak when the duty of speaking is imposed as much as by speaking falsely. Um, and the great dragon, okay, and this is found in Revelations 12 and 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, okay, he's full of fraud, he's full of lies. He is cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And so, again, all of this fraud is, is, is Satanism. Once a fraud, always a fraud. These are maxims of law now, okay? We're talking about stuff that's that's forever, okay? Uh, things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by some subsequent act. A thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. Time cannot render valid an act void in its origin, okay? These are all maxims of law. Um, out of fraud, no action arises. And any act by any government official to conceal fraud becomes an act of fraud. Uh, uh, it is a fraud to conceal a fraud. Okay, so so these and these government officials they're doing this stuff all the time. Okay, the the uh, the statutes are full of fraud. They're 
full of lies. Uh, and fraud is inexcusable and unpardonable. Um, fraud and deceit should excuse no man. That's that's a sight from Coke. Um, any fraud amounts to injustice. Fraud and justice never dwell together. Uh, and what is otherwise good and justice sought by force or fraud becomes bad and unjust. And again, that's a, that's a sight by Coke. Um, and so then we have this uh, Hegelian uh, uh, dialect, uh, uh, dialectic, Hegelian dialectic, uh, cause a problem and offer a solution which is already pre-planned, okay? And this is the game that these people are playing. And uh, Hegelian dialectic is, uh, was, uh, I guess, uh, the guy that's credited with it is George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Uh, Hegel or Hegel, whatever it is, uh, and and the synthetic solution of these conflicts can't be introduced until those being manipulated take a side that will advance the predetermined agenda. Okay, so okay, you can see what they're talking about here. <laughs> this is exactly what's going on these days. This is what a false flag operation's for. Okay, think about it, boys and girls. The Hegelian dialectic. They have an agenda, which is the centralization of power. The thesis, uh, manufactured terrorist threat. The antithesis is repressive police state. And the synthesis is the removal of freedoms and transfer of power from the many to the few. Okay, what do you think is going on nowadays, boys and girls? That's exactly what's going on nowadays. How the problem reaction solution paradigm works. The government creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. Okay, that sounds like a false flag operation, boys and girls. The populace reacts by asking the government for protection and help to solve the problem. Yeah, right, I'm asking for it. I don't want it. Uh, the government offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis occurred. Outcome, rights, and liberties are exchanged for the illusion of protection and help. Okay, what do you think the Founding Fathers said that anyone who is willing to give up freedom for security doesn't deserve freedom or security? Satanism. This is all Satanism. False flag operations, agent provocateurs, entrapment, and really what it is is murder, theft, kidnapping, fraud. Okay, it's all Satanism. And this is uh, 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 Goering, okay, and one of the Nazi leaders. Naturally, the common people don't want war, but after all, it's the leaders of a country to determine the policy, and it's always a simple matter to drag people along, whether it's a democracy or a fascist dictatorship or a parliament or a communist dictatorship. Voice or no voice, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. This is easy. All you have to do is tell them they're being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same way in every country, okay? And hello, boys and girls. Why do you think they're trying to drag us into WW3 right now? The more we do to you, the less you seem to believe we're doing it. And that's Joseph Mengel, another one of the Nazi leaders. And this is one of the Nazi leaders in America, uh, George Bush. We provide a problem, you provide a reaction. Together, we'll both create the solution. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's, that's yeah, more of that stuff that's been going on. What do you think? Hello, boys and girls. It's not a matter of what is true that counts, but a matter of what is perceived to be true. And that's one of the Nazi leaders in America. Uh, uh, the idea was that those who direct the overall conspiracy could use the differences in those two so-called ideologies, which are Marxism, Fascism, Socialism versus democracy and capitalism, to enable them, the Illuminati, to divide larger and larger forces of the human race into opposing camps so that they could be armed and then brainwashed into fighting and destroying each other. And that's Myron Fagan, and I have no idea he's probably an, uh, uh, another Satanist. Uh, um, and this guy's a Satanist. This is a quote from Alexander Trachtenberg uh, at the National Convention of Communist Parties in Madison Square Garden, 1944. Um, and uh, when we get ready to take the United States, we'll not take it under the label of communism. We'll not take it under the label of socialism. These labels are unpleasant to the American people and have been speared uh, too much. We will take the United States under labels we have made very lovable. How about like, like Obama? Obamacare. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, um, that we have made very lovable. We'll take it very under liberalism, under progressivism, under democracy, but take it we will. Gun control is like trying to reduce drunk driving by making it tougher for sober people to own cars. Yeah, that's it's exactly what it is. Gun control is restricted to use in movie theaters, shopping malls, high schools, universities. Okay, think about it, boys and girls. What that thing is saying is that is that 
Remember, remember the uh, uh, that Colorado shooter that went into that movie theater and murdered some people. Uh, uh, well, Colorado is one of the most repressive gun control states, and so so that's 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 what they're saying is that gun control is restricted to movie theaters, shopping malls, places like these, where where uh, the CIA uh, operatives can go in and murder a bunch of people, and and they only do it in a place where the, they've uh, effectively got some real good gun control because they don't do it in Texas because somebody will return fire, and these guys are cowards. Two idiots offended by the First Amendment were quickly introduced to the Second Amendment. Welcome to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> woo -hoo. The First World War was brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agenter uh, of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. And that is a cite from Albert Pike, who was a Confederate general. He was a leader of the Freemasons, and he was a Satanist, and is taken from his book Morals and Dogma. Uh, another site, okay? The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until a time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Again, Albert Pike, Confederate General, Confederate General, uh, leader of the Freemasons, a Satanist, uh, and his book. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the Illuminati between political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam uh, and political Zionism must mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on the issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist. We shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism control of savagery uh, and of the most bloody turmoil, then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without following where to render its adoration will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. Brought finally out of public view, this manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. And again, that's Albert Pike. See what's coming, boys and girls? The high office of the president has been used to foment a plot to destroy America's freedom. And before I leave office, I must destroy, uh, <clears throat> inform the citizens of this plight. And this is uh, JFK in a speech made to Columbia University on November 12, 1963, ten, 10 days before they murdered him. Uh, the drive of the Rockefellers and their allies to create a one world government combining super capitalism and communism under the same tent, all under their control. Do I mean conspiracy? Yes, I do. I am convinced there is such a plot, international in scope, generations old in planning, and incredibly evil in intent. Okay, Satanists, boys and girls. Congressman Larry P. McDonald, 1976, and he was, by the way, killed when that uh, KAL-007 was shot down uh, over, um, um, over um, Kamchatka, I think it was, um, by the Soviets. Uh, this is David Spangler, director of the Planetary Initiative on the United Nations. Okay, the UN is satanic, boys and girls. No one will enter the New World Order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer. No one will enter the New Age unless he will take a Luciferian initiation. And so that probably means uh, killing some baby and drinking his blood. That's probably what that means. That's what these guys are into. The real truth of the matter is you and I know that a financial element of the larger centers is owned by the, has owned the government ever since the days of Andrew Jackson. And that's a letter written by FDR to Colonel House, November 21st, 1933. 
Our job is to give people not what they want, but what we decide they ought to have. And that's the former president of CBS News, the bought and paid for news media. After the adoption of the 14th Amendment, a bill which became the first Civil Rights Act was introduced in the 39th Congress, the major purpose of which was to secure the recently freed Negroes, all our civil rights secured to white men, none other than citizens of the United States were within a provision of the act. Okay, so what we're talking about now is how the Congress is satanic, and they're racist is what they are. That's exactly what they are, is they're racist. Uh, uh, the 14th Amendment referred to slavery, consequently the only persons embraced by its provisions and for which Congress was authorized to legislate were the, in the manner were those then in slavery. Okay, so they created the problem, and that's the slavery, and then they're offering the solution, which is their solution. It's not a real solution, because all this is is just another form of slavery. Um, the persons declared to be citizens are all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to jurisdiction thereof. The evident meaning of these last words is not merely subject in some respect or degree to the jurisdiction of the United States, but completely subject. The term citizen of the United States is analogous to the term subject in the common law. It is evident that they, U.S. citizens, have not political rights which are vested in citizens of the states. They are not constituents of any community which is vested in any sovereign power of government. Their position partakes more of the character of subjects than of citizens. They are subject to the laws of the United States but have no voice in its management. If they are allowed to make laws, the validity of these laws is derived from the sanction of a government in which they are not represented. Mere citizenship they may have, but the political rights of citizens they cannot enjoy. And this is People de la Guerra, that's a California case. And think about it. Why do you think that they go and rig the elections, okay? I mean, think about it. It is enough that the people know there was an election. The people who cast the votes decide nothing. The people who count the votes decide everything. And that's Joseph Stalin, okay, boys and girls? And, and that's exactly what goes on, okay? The U.S. citizens, that's how they justify rigging the elections, okay? Because U.S. citizens do not have political rights. If they, if they have any effect on anything, then it's only because they, they feel like giving it to them. And, uh, and that's, 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 this is, it's all racist, okay? It's all racist. And while the 14th Amendment does not create a national citizenship, it has the effect of making that citizenship paramount and dominant instead of derivative and dependent upon state citizenship. And that's U.S. Supreme Court, the bill priest on the Supreme Court. The amendment reversed and all the original policy of the Constitution, so they, they basically overthrew the Constitution. They turned it upside down. And uh, they turned up uh, citizenship upside down from what was originally intended by the Founding Fathers. And, uh, and, and so, so then, I mean, if, if, if for the blacks, you know, this is all about uh, the, the blacks, actually. But for you people that are white out there, okay, they're using this to enslave you, too, okay? So it doesn't matter what race you are, okay? Everybody's getting enslaved. That's exactly what it is. These people are Satanists. They are diabolically evil. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, the Bible tells us what we need to do with these people. Uh, uh, the term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states and that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. No white person born within the limits of the United States and subject to their jurisdiction born without those limits and subsequently naturalized under their laws owes his status as citizens to the recent amendments of the federal constitution. Well, that's true, but they... They call it a contract, okay? When you go and volunteer into one of their fictitious color of law statutes, then you you consented, you agreed, it's a contract. And and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. The evidence of a Chinaman cannot be admitted to prove a white man guilty of manslaughter. The only absolute and unqualified right a U.S. citizen is to residence within the territorial boundaries of the United States. Uh, uh, in a criminal action against a white person, a black or mulatto person, uh, through, though the injured party cannot, under the statute, be a witness against the defendant. <laughs> This is the kind of stuff these guys play. The words in favor of or against any white person in the act prohibiting persons of one half or more Indian blood or Mongolian or Chinese from giving evidence refer to the defendant alone in a criminal action. Okay, this is, again, and I want to stress here that slavery of anybody, I don't care what race they are, slavery is an abomination, okay? And, and scriptures, you know, I mean, are pretty clear about that. And so uh, these people are Satanists. They're diabolically evil, uh, uh, and uh, and I am just trying to expose what they're doing. And uh, really, uh, uh, people of all races need to get together and put a stop to this. Is what we need to do. 
Uh, uh, therefore, U.S. citizens residing in one of the states of the Union is classified as properties and franchised the federal government as an individual entity. In our opinion, it was not the intent of the legislature to restrict the operation of the statute to those only who were subjects of the United States government. Okay, And so, uh, again, they're talking about subjects, federal subjects, Okay, U.S. citizens. The privilege and immunities of citizens of the United States do not necessarily include all the rights protected by the first eight amendments uh, to the federal constitution against the powers of the federal government. Yes, did you know that? Okay, U.S. citizens don't have access to the first eight amendments against the powers of the federal government unless they pass an act or something like that. Um, the technical niceties of the common law are not regarded. A jury does not figure ordinarily in a trial of an admiralty suit. The verdict of the jury merely advisory and may be disregarded by the court. The rules of practice may be altered whenever found to be inconvenient or likely to embarrass the business of the court. In other words, we want to railroad this guy, so uh, let's just uh, alter the rules and do whatever we want to do here and get it all done. A court of admiralty acts upon equitable principles, okay? So anytime it's equity, it's admiralty, okay? Think about it, boys and girls. A libel of information does not require all the technical precision of an indictment at common law, okay? So information, anytime it's an information, it's a libel, okay? Think about it, boys and girls. And and how many times do they go and do informations, okay? A speeding ticket, it says right on the back that it's an information. If the allegations describe the offense, all that is necessary is founded upon a statute. Okay, we're going to talk about statutes here in a minute. And so, again, this is all statutory. Okay, exactly what it is. It's all statutory. If it's uh, sufficient, if it pursues the words of the law. Uh, all citizens of the United States shall have the same right in every state and territory as is enjoyed by white citizens thereof to inherit, purchase, lease, sell, hold, and convey real and personal property. That is in United States Code today. Okay, Title 42, United States Code, Section 1982. Look it up, boys and girls. It's there today. The so-called 14th Amendment converted, converted U.S. Citizen, uh, U.S. subjects into U.S. citizens. The so-called 14th Amendment gave the slaves just another form of slavery. It's just a different kind of slavery. Dred Scott versus Sanford was the use, the, the reason that they justified that, because, because under Dred Scott versus Sanford, and I'm not sure who was who, one of those, there was Dred Scott and Sanford. Sanford, I think, was a county sheriff. Dred Scott was a black guy. He did a habeas corpus and got out of jail based on the habeas corpus. And it wound up getting to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said blacks don't aren't entitled to common law rights. Yeah, there's all these Masons, okay? Again, that's exactly what they did, okay? The blacks aren't entitled to common law rights. And so, so, so that's why they did this so-called 14th Amendment. They could have done other things, too. Uh, uh, um, but uh, but um, anyways, so so uh, and then and 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 then this this it wasn't the same Supreme Court. It was another one. But in U.S. versus Amistad, they gave them common law rights. In other words, if you you got to watch, there's a movie called The Amistad, and uh, uh, it, it was a slave ship. And uh, the slaves uh, were kidnapped uh, in Africa and, and, and brought to America. And, oh, by the way, they decided they needed, they had too many, so they lightened the load on the way. In other words, they went and tied boat anchors around a bunch of them and, and dropped them off into the sea. That's exactly what they did. Uh, and uh, so they murdered people. Uh, but, you know, I mean, they're slaves, they're property. This is the reason people are considered slaves is because they're considered property. If you are property, you have no rights. They can do anything they want, boys and girls. You don't want to be a slave. Anyways, in this Amistad, what happened is uh, the, the slaves didn't know how to sail, or the, the blacks, I'll say, the Africans, didn't know how to sail, so they went and uh, they killed everybody on the ship except for one guy, and they said, take us back to Africa. And he basically uh, uh, would sail uh, at nighttime. He'd sail north, and so they would think they were going south in the daytime, and at night they were actually going north. And so uh, uh, they, I guess they found him off, off of Long, Long Island, and uh, the U.S. Navy found him, and uh, they went and put him on trial for murder. And uh, the argument was, is first of all, that they're slaves, they're property, and they cannot commit murder no more than a dog or a cat can commit murder. Second of all, if they're, they're free men, and free men have every right to do what they did. And the Supreme Court, it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said they had every right to do what they did. And that's a common law right, by the way, boys and girls. And so now because of the so-called 14th Amendment, they can slave anybody they want, no matter what race they are. All they need is a contract under their satanic law merchant. And guess what? 
It doesn't matter what race you are. All they need is a contract. And this is the U.S. Supreme Court. Again, it's impossible to prove a jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with the state, such as a voluntary subscription to a license. All jurisdictional facts supporting claim that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear in the record of the court. And so, again, it's got to have a contract, boys and girls. That's what they do is they use that to get you into a contract, and I don't care what race you are. So when did these guys become these guys, okay, these uh, jackbooted thugs, the peace officers? Okay, on the left is the peace officers, and on the right is law enforcement officers. And we're going to talk about them here right now. Um, they screen out, first of all, they screen out intelligent people in the hiring process for their LEOs, okay, law enforcement officers. Uh, um, and I don't want anybody to think that's a peace officer that understands their duty as a peace officer. You know, I appreciate peace officers and what they do, and uh, but these LEOs, you know, we need to deal with them too, boys and girls. Jordan versus City of New London is a U.S. Uh, Robert Jordan was a uh, master, had a master's degree, and he tried to get a job with the City of New London Police Department, and uh, they refused refused to hire him because he scored too high in the test. He was too intelligent. They didn't want anybody with brains on their police department. And so, and he went and sued him, and it went to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, and lost, basically. And so, uh, 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 this is actually uh, an ABC News article that I got off the internet about it, and you can see that it says, court okays barring high IQs for cops. And we'll get in here a little bit closer. It says uh, a man whose bid to become a police officer was rejected after he scored too high on an intelligence test and lost, has lost the appeal of his federal lawsuit against the city. And so, uh, uh, when acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present day, the judge of the municipal court is acting as an administrative officer, not a judicial capacity. Courts administering or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely acts as an extension uh, as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial and not a discretionary capacity. Okay, so, enforce a statute, okay? That sounds like law enforcement officer. Okay, law enforcement officers enforce statutes. Okay, and so these are all, this is all about statutes. It is the accepted rule not only in state courts but of the federal courts as well that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for our superior reviewing purposes as a clerk for the agency. Okay, law enforcement officers enforce statutes, law enforcement officers are not peace officers. Law enforcement officers are operating in their private capacity too, boys and girls. Think about it. Because, remember, the judge is not a judge, so then everybody else is not operating in their official capacity either. The prosecutor is not official. The cop is not official. They're all in their private capacity. Okay, Think about that, boys and girls. This is the, uh, the TSA pigs. Uh, um, if we can't rape you, the terrorists win. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually an image of Napolitano that, yeah, don't get me going. I, I got to try and not be too abusive. So they're, uh, obviously, they got some somebody there with their legs spread apart and they're doing a colonoctomy or something. <laughs> this is another one of the TSA thugs. Uh, um, so your choice is molestation or radiation, either one. <laughs> See the guy's getting uh, getting his jollies there, feeling up uh, uh, the guy's uh, um, uh, uh, genitals there. Uh, um, love the TSA Body Cavern Explorer Corps. Uh, we're here for you. Think of us as your physician. Your health and safety is our, your our concern. The TSA cavity searches. They're doing that poor lady there. Uh, coming sooner than you think, because profiling would offend terrorists. Uh, uh, and this is uh, one of the uh, uh, order takers. I'm going to protect and serve the shit out of you. And she's uh, getting ready to punch somebody's lights out. Uh, um, so stay calm. Everything will be okay. We're here to help. And this is the police state that you're seeing today. Are they a predator or are they a protector? They're a pre predator. These law enforcement, these Leos are nothing but predators. They're hired thugs. Uh, they're, and, and, and any of them that, that are peace officers, uh, certainly I don't want the peace officers to have this reflect on them, although a lot of times it does. But, uh, but, uh, but these, law, these Leos, these law enforcement officers are nothing but hired thugs. And here's a good example, just the American, average American slob, but when he puts on an official costume and becomes authority man, click it or tick it, uh, uh, random checkpoint TSA groping black uniform, more intimidating, barking unreasonable orders, yes sir, photo enforced, 
random checkpoint and the and the uh, when he's the average American slob he's got no girlfriend but now all of a sudden he's got uh, uh, girls licking his boots and here's another good example of these hired thugs uh, uh, and here's another good example of these hired thugs a lot like ordinary brutality but with the bullshit charges laid against you just to cover their beating asses yeah yeah so 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 they go and uh, trump up a bunch of fictitious charges so that uh, so that they can get away with it uh, under their statutes too by the way it'll always be under their statutes okay under their fictitious color of law statutes protect serve and get away with it that's exactly what it's all about Police everywhere, justice nowhere, okay? Think about it, boys and girls. If the judge is a clerk masquerading as a judge, he's, he's, it's, there's no court, okay? They're all clerks masquerading as judges. All of them. Uh, um, so, do you feel safe now? The number of Americans killed by terrorists since 911, 33. Number of Americans killed by police since 911, 5,000, okay? This is what's going on, boys and girls. Judges have become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, act as mere clerks of the involved agency. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from a legislature. Then their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. So think about it, boys and girls. If they issue a warrant for your arrest, it's a nullity. It's a fraud. It doesn't exist. If they issue an order of any kind, an order dismissing the case, it's a fraud. It doesn't exist. It's a nullity. I don't care. So, think about it, boys and girls. The judge works for the state. The prosecutor works for the state. The police or witness works for the state. The vast majority of disputes with the police initiate on behalf of their employer are also adjudicated by their employer, where the plaintiff, the judge, the antagonist, and the only witness all represent the same party. And since so, no, no corpus delicti, mens re, or actus reus can be produced, doesn't technically qualify to be heard according to its own laws. The state, therefore, is indistinguishable from a criminal cartel. That's exactly what's going on. These people are criminals. That's exactly what it is, boys and girls. If they have to get your consent to obtain jurisdiction, if all judges become clerks working for a prosecutor when enforcing any statute, if a clerk masquerading as a judge cannot do anything judicial, then... Think about it, boys and girls. All statutes are color of law. All statutes have to be consented to. All statutes are satanic. They're full of fraud and deception. And a code is a compilation taken from statutes, which means a code is worth less than a statute. It's a kangaroo court, boys and girls. That's exactly what it is. It's a kangaroo court. See, this is the kangaroo family and their kangaroo court. And they have their kangaroo squad going out and getting business for their court. That's exactly what's going on. Where any state proceeds against a private individual in a judicial forum, it's well stated that the city, state, city, county, municipality, etc., weighs any immunity, cross claims, or complaints by direct or collateral means regarding the matters involved. When enforcing their statutes, judges of all courts do not act judicially and thus are not protected by qualified or limited immunity. So they're bought off, boys and girls. That's exactly what you do. Immunity for judges does not extend to acts which are clearly outside their jurisdiction. And this is some a couple sites about their codes. The code is only prima facie evidence of the laws of the United States where an inconsistency between United States codes and the statutes at large appears. The statutes at large prevail over the code, okay? So a code is where a bunch of Satanist bar members get into a room and and read all the statutes and and put their opinion of what the statutes say into a code. That's exactly what it is. It is well settled that the code cannot prevail over the statutes at large when the two are inconsistent. Uh, the co provisions of the code are merely prima facie evidence of the law. But the legislature specifically disclaimed any intention to change the meaning of any statute. The compilers of the code were not empowered by Congress to amend existing law, and doubtless had no thought of doing so. The act before us does not purport to amend a section of an act, but only a section of a comp compilation entitled Revised Code of Washington, which is not the law. Such an act purporting to amend only a section of a prima facie compilation leaves the law unchanged. <laughs> So now you see what they're doing? They go and make a code and then they revise the code. It, it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's exactly what this is saying too, by the way. 
It's insisted that Congress could act in a double capacity, one in legislating for the states and the other as a local legislature for the District of Columbia. In the latter, characters admitted that the power of levying direct taxes might be exercised, but for district purposes only, as a state legislature might tax for state purposes. But that it could not legislate for the district, uh, giving under Article 1 or 8, giving Congress the power to lay and collect taxes, imposts, and excises, which shall be uniform throughout the United States, inasmuch as the district was no part of the United States states and so think about it boys and girls what they're saying is that unless the tax is apportioned if it's a direct tax it has to be apportioned and uh, either that or it's only for DC okay so anytime it's not like income tax is not apportioned so then it's only for DC that's why they have to fabricate evidence that you're a US citizen okay and that's the answer that's the answer I'm not one of your little ice scumbag US citizens and uh, and so uh, um, it's the same thing with court filing fees. Okay, they're not apportioned. Okay, how many taxes are really apportioned? You know, that's a good question. Um, anyways, um, so eliminating then from the opinions of this court all expressions unnecessary. This is uh, Downs versus Bidwell again. Uh, unnecessary for the disposition of the particular case and gleaning therefrom the exact point decided in each, the following propositions may be considered as established. That the District of Columbia and territories are not states within the judicial clause of the Constitution given jurisdiction in cases between citizens of different states. Okay, so in other words, um, D.C. citizens don't get access. Uh, people that live in D.C. or the territories do not uh, have access to an Article Three court. That's what they're saying there. Okay, so yeah, D.C. citizens and the territories do not have access to an Article Three court. The territories are not states, uh, uh, permitting writs of error from this court in cases where the validity of a state statute is drawn into question. So, um, yeah, so the, you can't uh, um, uh, do, uh, if you're in a territory or D.C., you cannot do go to the Supreme Court with a petition for a writ of error. Okay. Uh, that the District of Columbia and the territories are states as that word is used in treaties with foreign powers with respect to ownership, disposition, and inheritance of property, okay? And so D.C. are states for the Sestake Trust. Think about it. Yeah, you look in the D.C. code and it talks all about it in there, okay? That's exactly what it is. The territories uh, are not within the clause of the Constitution providing for the creation of a Supreme Court and such inferior courts as Congress may uh, see fit to establish. In other words, they get Article I courts only. And the Constitution does not apply to foreign countries or trials therein conducted. And uh, and so then they can, it's basically um, military dictatorship outside of the states. Um, the laws of Congress in respect to those matters outside the constitutionally delegated powers do not extend in the territorial limits of the states but have force only in the District of Columbia and other places that are within the exclusive jurisdiction of the national government. The exclusive jurisdiction which the United States have in Fort and Dockyard ceded to them is derived from the express assent of the states by whom the sessions are made. It could be derived in no other manner because without it the authority of the state would be supreme and exclusive. Okay, in other words in order for the federal government to have jurisdiction in Texas, for example, the there has to be land ceded to the federal government by Texas. And I would say that there's no land in Texas that's ever been ceded to the federal government. Now, the federal government does own land. They bought it, but it's never been ceded. Okay, so the point is that, that they don't have jurisdiction, even in their own territories, like military bases and stuff like that. They don't have jurisdiction. Okay, that's state territory. Um, we therefore decline to overrule the opinion of the Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. In other words, uh, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states are not included in the catalog of controversies over which Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of D.C. through their plenary power nationally. Plenary, okay, boys and girls, that's military dictatorship. That's Article 1. And when in the several states, as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. Okay, so in other words, D.C. citizens, U.S. citizens, we're talking U.S. citizens now, do not get an Article Three court. They get an Article One court, and it doesn't matter where they live. Okay, if they're anywhere in America. Did you know there used to be a U.S. district court for the District of China? Okay, think about it, boys and girls. In the District of China, you get an Article One court if you're a US citizen. Actually, you'd get one no matter what because in China is 
is outside of the states, the real states in America under the Constitution. Anyways, that's Mutual uh, uh, National Mutual Insurance Company in D.C. and Tidewater Transfer Company, U.S. Supreme Court again. So, and there's been created a fictional federal state of XXX within a state, and so they like to play those games too. Okay, so there's actually in Texas, there's two states of Texas, at least two. There's a state of Texas in upper and lower case, and there's a state of Texas in all block capital letters. And then there's a Texas state. <laughs> Civil law, Roman law, and Roman civil law are convertible phrases and mean the same system of jurisprudence. That rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law, to distinguish it from the law of nature, from international law. And so think about it. This is uh, all civil law, Roman law, and Roman civil law are all uh, convertible phrases, and, and they're basically municipal law. Okay, so it's, it's Roman civil law. And... Um, and that's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Status. This is all about Roman civil law and status. Okay? This is where it's all going to. And and you have to understand that um, um, because they're turning you into a slave. Slavery is a status. This is all under Roman civil law. And so they have to get you into this D.C. jurisdiction because in the D.C. jurisdiction is Roman civil law. It's it's Article One court. It's Roman civil law, and and status is everything. And the courts are bought and paid for, and and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So anyway, status is the position of an individual regarded as a person. The const constitute Constitutive elements, which were liberty, citizenship, and membership in a family, okay? And it's under civil law, okay? Status is is part of civil law, okay? Uh, status, sta standing state condition, situation, a corporation has no status as a citizen outside jurisdiction where it's created, okay? And and this the reason I have this here is because corporations are citizens, okay? And actually, a, a corporation is a citizen and a citizen is a corporation. Okay, it goes back and forth. Okay, so under Roman civil law, everything is corporate. Status: the question of status is of importance in jurisprudence because it is generally treated as a basis for the classification of law according as it applies to ordinary persons uh, or to persons having status, i.e., a disability, a peculiar legal condition such as infants, married women, lunatics, convicts, bankrupts, aliens, public officers, law, abnormal law, law persons. Uh, where the opinions of other writers are referred to and criticized. Okay, so again, this is all talk. These are different kinds of status. Status, a person's legal condition, um, where uh, personal property, some of personal legal rights, duties, liabilities, other legal relations, or any particular group of them separated, considered the status of a landowner, person's legal condition regarding personal rights, and, uh, excluding property relations, the status of a father, the status of a wife, a person's capacities and incapacities as opposed to other elements of personal status, a person's legal condition insofar as it is uh, imposed by the law without the person's consent, as opposed to a condition that the person has acquired by agreement, the status of a slave. Okay? So you, you become a slave by agreement. Okay? That's what they're saying. Yep. The status or standing of a person is meant uh, the position that he holds with reference to the rights which are recognized and maintained by the law. In other words, his capacity for the exercise and enjoyment of legal rights. And it's this is taken all taken from a book by James Hadley, Introduction to Roman Law. That's right. Roman Law. This is all Roman civil law and it's satanic. Law of status category of law dealing with personal or non-proprietary rights. It is one of the three departments into which civil law is divided. So the three departments are law of status, law of obligations, and law of property. Law of persons, the law relating to persons, the law that pertains to different statuses of persons. Okay, so this is again status. A freeman. A person who enjoys all civil and political rights belong to people under a free government. A person who is not a slave. Okay, so again, a freeman even is a status. And this is taken from the commentaries of Gaius and Rules of Ulpian, um, uh, which is a book that was written like about 350 A.D. It was under the Roman... Um, Empire to take an instance where a person sui juris has given himself an adoption or a woman has passed under manus all her property incorporeal and corporal 
uh, and all that is due to them is acquired by the adopting party except those things which perish by capitis diminutio of which kinds are usufruct and obligations to servants on part of a freeman contract by oath and matters enforceable by a statute okay so again this is all talking about status this is roman civil law this is persons and um, and uh, and uh, and statutes it's all it's all talking about that stuff capitus diminutio is the destruction of a legal personality it's a type of status capitus diminutio wipes out the former individual puts a new one in its place between the old and new individual there is legally speaking nothing in common a jurisdiction a juristic personality may be thus destroyed in one of three ways by loss of status libertatis uh, this is capitus diminutio maxima, okay, that's when you become a slave. By a lot of status uh, civitatis, uh, this is the capitus diminutio media, and by severance from the agnetic family, this entails capitus diminutio minima. Okay, so this is uh, taken from a textbook of the history and system of Roman private law, okay, this is all contracts, okay, status. It's all about status. Slavery is the status under Roman civil law. Capitus diminutio maxima uh, is the diminution of a person's legal status as a, a result of being reduced to slavery. Capitus diminutio in Roman law, diminishing or abridgment of personality, a loss or curtailment of his man's status or aggregate legal attributes and qualifications. Capitus diminutio maxima is the highest and most comprehensive loss of status occurred when a man's condition was changed one to freedom to one of bondage when he became a slave, slept away with it all rights of citizenship and all family rights. So they're using their Roman civil law. That's exactly what this is all about, and this is all about D.C. With Roman civil law, status is everything. There's no real status. Justice is for sale, depending on who you are. Status dealing with statutes and corporations okay that's under Roman civil law common law status is nothing it doesn't matter who you are everybody is treated the same I mean that's whole idea of justice being blind that's that's common law okay it has nothing to do with Roman civil law justice is not blind with Roman civil law it's a kangaroo court they're a bunch of thieves Parliament Congress legislatures are satanic all their legislation is color of law all racism comes from Congress and their Masonic buddies. There's no judges, just clerks masquerading as judges. All courts, except common law courts, are satanic. All of it operates under Roman civil law, which is satanic. All Roman under Roman civil law status is everything, and under common law status is nothing. And uh, so the Bible talks about these Satanists and their satanic Roman law, and it also tells us what we need to do if we do not want to be held responsible. Think about this, boys and girls. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. And if a man be found stealing every his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, okay, that's exactly what they do. When they put you in jail, they sell you in there. And then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. Um, and this is a clip art that I got. It, seem to be appropriate some people just need a hug so it's never over till you say it's over shake the dust of the earth mop your feet against them and their household and this is talking first Peter by which he also went and preached to the spirits in prison okay so that's where they're gonna end up they're gonna go to jail although they're gonna go to jail for a thousand years it shall come to pass in that day the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered into the pit and they shall be shut up in the prison and after many days shall they be visited. And that's, that's a thousand years. And we'll see here in a minute. Out of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. That's Revelation 17, 1 to 2. And oh, think about it. A horse sells himself for money. Gee, that sounds like the Vatican. Many waters, okay, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Many waters, gee, that sounds like admiralty maritime law, which is really contract law. It's under Satanism, satanic contract law. Fornication is illicit activity. I mean, gee, that sounds like circulating IOUs for money, okay? Federal Reserve, no, it's Bank of Canada, no, it's all these IOUs circulating around for money. And then the wine getting drunk with the wine of the fornication, while well, everybody's getting rich with all this fake money being circulated around. Woohoo! It's getting rich! The stock market's going crazy! Woohoo! And the kings of the earth and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks and the mountains said, and the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. So, 
anyways, uh, uh, Obama is an antichrist. I will say that. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't know that he is the antichrist that talks is talked about in the book of Revelations, but he's certainly an antichrist. And we'll go into why right now. Uh, and this is John 1 John 2 and 22, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is a Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of antichrist. That's 1 John 3 and 4. And uh, for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. 2 John 1 and 7. And so Obama's a liar. How can you tell he's lying? Well, his lips are moving, boys and girls. Everything he says is a lie. Uh, uh, and Obama's a Muslim, uh, uh, which is by definition an antichrist. Muslims do not believe that Jesus is the Christ. They believe Jesus was a great prophet, but they don't believe that he was the Christ, and they don't believe he was the Son of God. And uh, so they're antichrist by definition. I am not competent. I am not incompetent. I am destroying America more quickly than anyone thought possible. I'm not in over my head. I'm advancing totalitarianism right under your noses. I'm not stupid. The stupid are those who fail to see the danger I bring. I'm not failing. I am succeeding at every goal I have set. I am embracing your enemies and rejecting your friends. I am acting lawlessly and unconstitutionally. I am ignoring your constitution. I am disobeying your law. Your media is abetting me. Your Congress is not stopping me. Those sworn to defend your constitution are not removing me. I am fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Your constitution, liberty, freedom, wealth, future, and children are no longer at risk. The risk is past. They've already been lost. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society, over the course of time, they create themselves a legal system that authorizes it and a moral court that glorifies it. When exposing a crime is treated as committing a crime, you are ruled by criminals. Think about it, boys and girls. What do you think? Snowden went and tried to expose all these this NSA thieves, and, and look at what happened to him. Okay, so think about it, boys and girls. Think about it. So there's endless wars. There's the war on drugs, the war on crimes, the war on terror. All of this is coming from Congress. Okay, All wars are, are really a giant commercial transaction. All wars are really the banksters making a bunch of fake money. All warfare is satanic. Okay, You need to watch my uh, Void Judgments video. Okay, It goes through there at great length about the Treating with the Enemy Act and stuff like that. This is uh, taken from, um, let's see here, Global Research Newsletter. And it's uh, dated, um, uh, looks like June 17, 2005. Oh, no, no, 20 February 2015. That's it. Islamic State is instigated and created by a certain intelligence agency. Of course, this is coming from the vice president of Iran, but uh, uh, there's a lot of, lot of credibility to this, actually, uh, um, uh, even though it is coming from somebody like that. Uh, you know, I mean, he might not be that bad of a guy. I kind of like Putin, quite frankly. Uh, uh, I like him better than Obama. Um, anyways, um, so let's let's look at it a little closer here. Um, he, he said that ISIS was created by the triad triangle of Mossad, MI6, and CIA. Uh, said that dollars from Saudi Arabia and some Gulf countries are responsible for funding the terrorist army. And he and he says uh, uh, says that they have satanic goals. And I think he's a hundred percent right on the money there. And uh, um, he says that. Uh, Oh, let's go down here to the bottom. It says, in June, it was revealed the U.S. military trained ISIS members at a secret base in Jordan. Following the attacks of September 11, 2001, it was reported a number of purported hijackers were trained in strategy and tactics at a naval air station in Pensacola, Florida, and uh, the Air War College in Montgomery, Alabama, according to Newsweek. Okay, so he's getting a source from, from, from uh, um, the American media. And so uh, let's look some more says U.S. admitted its allies fund ISIS. In September, the chairman of the Joint Peace of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, told the Senate Armed Services Committee, I know major Marab allies who fund them. In January, uh, uh, said to be a Pakistani commander of IS, Yusuf al Salivi confessed to law enforcement agencies in Pakistan to getting funds via the United States. So, so they gonna want to go and uh, and uh, and create this war on terror so they can persecute me and you is what it is, and uh, and promote their agenda of this uh, this uh, 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 new world order they're trying to bring about. Um, so, 
And this is taken from RT, one of the more objective news medias these days. Uh, uh, the U.S. police shot dead almost 400 people in five months, okay? And uh, at least 385 people ranging in age from 16 to 83 have died at the hands of police across the U.S. this year so far. And this was uh, uh, May 31st, 2015. So war is business. This is all about business. Uh, uh, Adolf Hitler said he wasn't a dictator. Fidel Castro said he wasn't a dictator. And, and Obama said he's not a dictator. Uh, uh, so that awkward moment when you realize that the same government that's supposed to protect us from terrorists is the terrorist. Think about it, boys and girls. If you think this is for your protection, you clearly have no idea what's going on. Can you spot the terrorists in this picture? Terrorism is a noun. It's the use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims, okay? Hello, boys and girls. Can you see what's going on? This is more of that, okay? He's surrounding himself with a bunch of jackbooted thugs, or these code enforcers, these Leos. And uh, uh, warning, this is the standing army you were told not to tolerate, okay? That's exactly what's going on, boys and girls, these Leos. Ask yourself this. Are you more likely to be infected or beheaded than you were six years ago? How about 12 years ago or 13 years ago then 2001? Okay. Are you more likely to be infected or beheaded than you were then? Okay. Ask yourself. Okay. <laughs> How to control a nation? Weapons of mass destruction. Ooh, let's get all hyped up about that. Thanks to the corporate news, they go and deceive it, everything, and then they divide everybody with the uh, the, uh, 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 the republicrats and the and the demagogues. Okay, and so. So they go and uh, with the so-called parties, okay, that are actually two sides of the same coin. When when is a war is when your government is, tells you who the enemy is. Revolution is when you figure it out for yourself. <laughs> so uh, this is going on in Canada and all over the world because it is really coming from the UN. And this is uh, actually uh, another RT uh, uh, article taken March 15, 2015. The Vatican endorses military force against ISIS. Okay, think about it, boys and girls. Okay, they can't do anything without getting the Vatican's permission. They always have to get the Vatican's permission, and then they can go and, and have at her. Okay, Vatican line on ISIS has taken a new turn. Its ambassador in Geneva suggested that if a political settlement is impossible, military force should be used against the jihadists. He also said the form of intervention should be defined by the UN. Okay, so again, this is all coming from the UN. It's exactly where it's coming from, boys and girls. Police state. That's police state in Canada. Okay? Say no to a police state. That's the RCMP pig's badge in Canada to a police state. Say no to a police state. Big Brother's watching you. That's Harper. And uh, that's another one of Harper. I want you to not care. And news from the War Crimes R Us. This is Canada. New from War Crimes R Us in Canada. And this is actually... Uh, 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 the bankster thieves, okay? We own you, okay? The big owners, the wealthy, the real owners, okay? And if you look there on the right, uh, um, the first one is Paulson. Uh, the second one, I'm not sure. The third one is Greenspan. And uh, and then if you go back to the back, uh, the center, uh, I'm not sure who that is, but the one on the right of center, that's uh, um, Rockefeller. And the one in the middle on the right, or I should say the left, the one in the middle on the left and the, the one on just on the left is Rockefeller and the one in the middle on the left is Obama and then the one on the far left is uh, Bernanke. If you don't give Henry Paulson 700 billion dollars we'll wreck the economy and kill this dog. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. Think about it boys and girls. Here's Obama laughing and drinking it up with his bankster buddies, the pigs. Uh, uh, beware of the banksters. Thanks for the bailout. Now check our new higher interest rates and our new penalties. And don't forget, we're too big to fail. Okay, that's exactly what's going on, boys and girls. Banksters arrested, zero. Americans arrested protesting the big banks, 7,786. Uh, uh, so this new Visa card that's coming out is the Mugga Bank Visa card. The bank of the future It's called Mugga Bank. <laughs> And uh, and this is this is a good one. I thought this is good. You got the London electronic shop and a couple burglars in there stealing a couple TVs, and the banksters are walking by with their wheelbarrows full of money and saying, "Amateurs." That's right. That's exactly what's going on. The International Monetary Fund and all of Europe is sold. 
and this is uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. Okay, the CFR start calling it a stop calling it a conspiracy theory. It is not a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fact. You ever watch the YouTube video that she's got? And if you don't think it's about race, boys and girls, think again. She is not your friend. I don't care what color you are or race. Uh, this is Margaret Sanger. Uh, uh, colored people are like human weeds and need to be exterminated. And, uh, and then Hillary Clinton says, I admire Margaret Sanger enormously and her courage and tenacity and her vision. Okay, so there you go, boys and girls. Okay, she's about as racist as they come. And uh, and how many people voted for her, especially you know people of other races? This is a Harvard Law Review article: policing, mass imprisonment, and the failure of American lawyers. Okay, and that's April 10, 2015. Okay, that's exactly what's going on. Congress literally doesn't care what you think. Uh, um, and this is, uh, 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 this is a study, um, a Princeton University study, public opinion is near, is near zero impact on Congress. And that's May 27, 2015. Satan, uh, so what's going to happen is Satan is going to be in prison for a thousand years. This is Revelations 22 to 3. So think about it, boys and girls, is Satan's going to be in prison. That's, that's what's going to precipitate all of this stuff in Book of Revelations is about Satan and, and his rise to power. And so, uh, um, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him to the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set the seal upon him, that she he should deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years should be fulfilled. Okay, so so that's, this is what it's all about, Satanism, all these Satanists running around, okay? This is all talking about the book of Revelations, and what's happening in the book of Revelations. We're seeing it right in front of us, right now. Satanists in the book of Revelations. Mark Passio says two-thirds of Americans are practicing Satanists. Everything you see going on these days is Satanists. Any so-called Christian church with 501c3 tax-exempt status is a satanic tax-exempt organization masquerading as a church. Think about it, boys and girls. Obama is a Satanist. Congress is full of Satanists. Republicans or Democrats or whatever they want to call themselves, they all work together to accomplish the same objective. The United Nations is a satanic organization. Judgment Day is coming. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews or Christians or whatever, and are not. But are the synagogue of Satan? That's Revelations 2 and 9, and I can't help but think of the parable of the ten virgins. Okay, and you think about that for a minute. Ten virgins, okay, the ten virgins. The virgins are good people, people that are trying to do the right thing. Okay, and half of them don't get it. Okay, half of them are, I'll bet you, satanic. That's the reason Christ says, I don't know you. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. When liberty and freedom are at stake, your silent isn't golden, it's yellow. Conspiracy theorist, someone who questions the statements of known liars. That's a conspiracy theory. I guess I'm a conspiracy theorist. We now live in a nation where doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, and the press destroys information, religions destroy morals, and our banks destroy the economy. There's a fool born every minute. Are you one of them? Be sober, vigilant, because of your adversary. The devil is in a, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. This is a plaque, the common law, the plaque at Jamestown Memorial Church in historical, uh, historic Jamestown Island. The common law here, the common law of England, was established on this continent with the arrival of the first settlers in May 13, 1607. The first charter granted to James I of Virginia Company in 1606 declared that the inhabitants of the colony shall have enjoy all liberties, franchises, and immunities as, they be, as, as if they had been abiding and born within this our realm of England. Since Magna Carta, the common law has been the cornerstone of individual liberties, even against the crown. Summarized later in the Bill of Rights, its principles have inspired the development of our system of freedom under law, which is at once our dearest possession and proudest achievement. And common law is our remedy, okay? And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this thing. Uh, this is all Satanism. This is all what's going on. This is Book of Revelations going on right here in front of you, boys and girls. 
The copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administrating Your Public Servants. I've also got another one at Google, the same name. I've got Vimeo videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. Send an email for other copies of documents to engineerwin at Gmail or engineerwin at Yahoo. And at the very first slide, there's a couple other email addresses you can contact me at also sometimes Gmail as a reputation.